The Insta360 X3 and the GoPro Hero 11 Black are two of the most interesting and perhaps best action cameras to be released in 2022. And there are a lot of differences between these cameras, but there are also some similarities. So in this video, I'm gonna film it with both cameras side by side, kind of flip between the two of them to show the image quality and also compare eight main points between these two cameras, including image quality, audio quality, stability, accessories, accessories, and some other little neat things about these cameras. In case you're unfamiliar with these two cameras, it might seem unfair that I'm comparing a 360 camera to a non-360 camera. And that is definitely a point in favor of Insta360, the fact that it can shoot like that. But there is actually a mode on the X3 called single lens mode, which is like action camera mode, and it kind of turns that camera into a GoPro. So I'm gonna really be focusing on that aspect of comparing these two cameras because I wanna see if the single lens mode on the Insta360 X3 is comparable to the GoPro Hero 11 quality. And do it from a vlogging perspective in particular because that's really what we do in this channel. We evaluate these small compact cameras to try to find the best ones for vlogging. So the first comparison point I want to address is the image quality, specifically the resolution. So on paper, both of these cameras can shoot at up to 5K resolution. However, on the Insta360, it's 5K when you're shooting in 360 mode. And that means when you actually export that video as a flat, non-360 video, it ends up being less than 5K. And so if you're shooting in single lens mode like I am right now, then that is actually capped at 4K 30 frames per second. That's the highest resolution. GoPro can shoot in 5K uh, 60 frames per second in flat mode, and you can also shoot down to 4K 1080p. So it's a little bit more flexible in terms of image resolution, and it goes even higher on the GoPro compared to the Insta360 X3 when you're shooting in flat mode. The next comparison point is perhaps a little obvious, but that's the fact that the X3 can shoot in 360 while the GoPro cannot, but it still has a trick up its sleeve. So to first talk about the X3, you can shoot not only in 360, but they also added a new mode called Me Mode, which is pretty cool because it gives you a flat video. And if you're holding the selfie stick, it actually crops out that selfie stick. So it looks like you've got a cameraman following you around. Now the GoPro can't do 360 or Me Mode, but the Hero 11 does have a new taller sensor. And that sensor allows you to now shoot a new aspect ratio, 8-7. And when you do that, that gives you flexibility in your video to crop it horizontally or vertically. So it gives you some more wiggle room in post-production. Now, obviously it's not the same benefit as shooting in 360, but I still like the fact that GoPro is giving us some more options to reframe our shot later, which is the main thing that I like about having a 360 camera. Yeah. Oh, thank you. What are we going to do with these rocks? Since I mentioned aspect ratio, both cameras can shoot in either vertical or horizontal video, but I will say that the X3 makes it a little bit easier to shoot in vertical video whenever you want to make an Instagram reel or a TikTok. Because of the shape of the camera, you can shoot in vertical without having to flip the camera sideways. Versus on the GoPro, if you want to shoot vertical, you have to physically turn the camera on its side to get that vertical aspect ratio. Now, so far, this video has been largely in favor of the Insta360 X3 three but there's one thing there's a couple things actually but the first thing that it doesn't do so well is shoot in slow motion so unfortunately they removed the mode shoot in slow-mo on the x3 i think that was present on the x2 but now if you want to shoot in slow-mo you have to shoot your video and then take it into the insta360 app either for your desktop computer or your smartphone and then you have to slow down that footage in post-production that's something you don't have to do on the gopro you can just just slide over to slow-mo mode or slow-mo preset actually and shoot in your slow motion and so that's something that hopefully Insta360 will add in the future but for now it's a lot easier to shoot in slow-mo on the GoPro. Now the next comparison point is audio again I'm using the built-in microphones on both cameras I've got a lot of planes going by so I apologize if the audio isn't so great but this is a good test to see how it does isolating my voice when there's external noise around us but yeah, both cameras have actually pretty good built-in audio. And there's also the option to add your own external microphone. But to do that on both cameras, you got to get the respective microphone adapters. 
Now GoPro has two options. You can get the official GoPro mic adapter, but then you have to get a cage for it to attach your microphone physically to the camera. So the cleaner way to do that on a GoPro is to get the media mod, which is more form-fitting, also has its own kind of external microphone that you can use, or you can use your own microphone uh, if you want to go that route. For the Insta360 X3, that's its own little microphone adapter, which is a lot smaller than GoPro's option. And uh, you also have to buy a little piece made by Ulanzi, I think, to physically attach your microphone to the side of the camera. And it's made in particular to be used with the Rode Wireless Go, so that's the one that's going to work the best with the X3. But my bigger gripe with the Insta360 X3 audio adapter is that it makes the whole camera really bulky. So I think it's a pretty good solution considering you know the size of the camera and that they've been able to give you an option to add your own microphone. But when you do that, it just makes the camera a lot bigger and bulkier and it's kind of harder to use. So I think that the GoPro way of adding an external microphone is a lot better in terms of the quality as well as the experience. Since I mentioned the overall physical form of both cameras, the Insta360 X3 is kind of like this long rectangle shape versus the GoPro, which is more of a square compact shape that fits better in your hands. So overall, I like the physical form factor of the GoPro. It's a lot easier to travel with and vlog with. And GoPro also has a lot more accessories out there that are built specifically for this shape and size of camera. Versus Insta360, you know, this camera has been around now for three generations. So there are accessories out there for it, but the market is just not quite as robust as GoPro at the moment. So the physical form factor of both cameras and how protective they are is another point of comparison. So on the Insta360 X3, it has a really big LCD. It's actually the biggest LCD that they've ever had on a X camera. <laughs> There's now sound behind me, so again, a very good test of how good these cameras are at isolating my voice. But yes, the X3 has this big LCD that has to be protected now, as well as the two lenses because it's a 360 camera. Now you can get lens guards to protect the lenses, and I've actually been using this camera in a variety of situations. I've been open water swimming with it at least five times, and the camera doesn't have a scratch on it. It actually looks really good. So it holds up pretty well based on my my experience. In the case of the GoPro, it also has LCD screens. It actually has two. It's got that front-facing LCD plus the back-facing LCD. Both can get scratched or damaged. And it has a lens, but the lens has a filter on it. And that filter is replaceable. So that's one thing that the GoPro has that's a benefit over the X3 is that it comes with a protective lens filter. What you got? You got a weed? Are you picking a flower? Yeah, Gigi likes to pick flowers. Since I mentioned possibly damaging cameras, that's another point in favor of GoPro. So you might notice that in recent years, GoPro has been pushing this subscription, which you pay an annual fee for, and it lowers the overall price of your GoPro if you buy a new one. It also gives you a discount on accessories if you buy it through their website. And it also gives you a free camera replacement maybe up to two, don't quote me on that, but at least one, no questions asked, they'll just re uh, replace the camera for you, uh, no matter what the problem is. So that's a nice benefit of being a subscriber. And also you get an unlimited cloud backup, which is a really great deal that we only recently started taking advantage of, but it's been a really nice feature along with the auto upload that has come on the Hero 11. And to my knowledge, no such program exists for Insta360 yet. It'd be really nice if they did have something like that because Insta360, you know, as a company, they've been super innovative, really pushing the boundaries in terms of compact action cameras or webcams or just pocket cameras in general. So I love Insta360 from that perspective. I think they've got a wide variety of really unique, innovative products that some compare to GoPro and others really don't. They're kind of just on their own level. 
Well, there you have it. There are eight comparison points from a vlogging perspective between the Insta360 X3 and the GoPro Hero 11 Black. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think overall, <laughs> a lot of my points were swaying in favor of GoPro because that's honestly how I feel. As I said before, I think that the Insta360 X3 in particular is a really great camera if you're only shooting action. You know, if we weren't trying to vlog with these cameras, then I would say that a 360 camera of some kind, especially the X3, is the way to go because you can get a variety of angles all in one go and you can even switch over to action camera mode if you want to do that. However, when it comes to the best camera for vlogging, I think that there's still a strong case to go with the X3 because again, you can do 360 mode or you can do single lens flat mode. You can add an external microphone pretty easily or use the built-in internal microphones, which are pretty good. But I do think that GoPro still has an edge up in terms of image quality. Like GoPro is still king in terms of having best, highest image quality, it just has this nice shiny look that you can't quite get with any other action cameras right now. In terms of the accessories, they're, you know, they're really built out. There's tons of accessories for GoPro cameras and also the media mod attaching. It's a lot cleaner look, more consistent in terms of audio being really good. And so for vlogging, we're still going with GoPro. Um, I do still carry the Insta360 with me because as a B-roll camera, it's just the best camera. Like I love that me mode, I love being able to shoot 360, but for vlogging, I'm still personally going with GoPro.